Hello, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. My name is Carla, and today we were talking about one of my all-time favorite garden chores, which is garden planning. If you haven't already seen the two videos that I've done before now about garden planning, go check those out. But today we're going to talk a lot about how do I actually know how much to grow? And whether you are someone like me who loves lists and charts and all of those planning tools, or you're someone who absolutely hates it, it's something that we all need to do in one way or another in order to be successful with our garden goals. So one of the things I like to do every year is kind of review the year before. What did we grow? What did we have too much of? What did we have too little of? What did I can? What did we freeze? What did we eat fresh? These are all questions that I think about as I'm going through this process. Um, knowing how we did helps inform how I want to do next year. So I'll go through some of some of the items. I, I take it basically item by item. I start with tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of the things we grow the most of. It's one of the things that is an ingredient in a lot of the things that we make. And it's something we like to eat fresh. It's something I can freeze. I don't tend to freeze a lot of them, but I can. And I it's something that I can a lot of. So it's one of our more important crops. Before we get too far into the specifics of each crop that I'm planning to grow this year, I think there's probably some people that might be like, but wait, Carla, I've never grown a garden before. I don't know how many to grow of each item or I've started small and I'm still learning and I don't know how many of everything that I want to grow. And first of all, I want to tell you, neither do I. Every year is a tweak of the system. Um, some years we get it pretty close. Some years we overshoot, some years we undershoot. And of course, weather and conditions always play a factor in that as well. Um, if you are just starting and have literally no idea how to go about starting planning the number of plants. There are charts online, um, you know, that will tell you how many plants per person or per family of four is another common measurement to figure out how many plants you should start with. I have never found those to be that useful and here is why. So for example, I know beans, I can't remember the number, but it's like, you know, they, they tell you to plant whatever the number, let's say it's 25 bean plants per person. Okay, but what does that mean? Is that fresh eating? Is that canning? Is that like for a year's worth? Like there's usually no context with those charts to let you know what that actually means. And we are a family that I'm probably the only one who would eat green beans on a regular basis. Um, my stepkids aren't a huge fan of green beans. Jarrett doesn't like green beans. So there, our family of four already is not in line with what that family of four chart is suggesting, right? So I think it's important to also consider what things your family likes and what things your family will eat and start with those few things. Um, so in our family, the big things are tomatoes and peppers. Those are the number two things. Um, typically, we didn't grow a lot of potatoes before last year because, you know, I live in one of the potato belts of Canada and potatoes are cheap. So, Last year we grew some fingerlings and I was like, okay, here's, you know, a value added, you know, product that I typically either can't find or can't find very cheaply. This might actually be worth my time growing. So I've added that to the list this year. Um, some of the items we, we really like zucchini and summer squash, particularly patty pans I'm a fan of. We like to grow carrots. We like to grow um, 
peas, particularly snow peas. I don't really bother. I love eating shelling peas out of the garden, but they are time consuming to shell and I can buy frozen peas that once they're cooked taste just like the fresh peas that I, you know, spent a lot of hours growing and harvesting. So there, those are some of the things that I like to think about also when I'm making my decisions about what we're gonna grow. Is it something that's cheaply available? I might not waste my time. Is it something that's extremely time consuming? It might not be worth my time. Corn is another example of that. Um, it's often in season available fairly cheaply and it's something that you need a lot of space to grow and you need the season to go right to grow it well where I live. So typically I don't, I don't grow a lot of corn either. Um, cucumbers, we're not really huge pickle fans. Um, cucumbers are not something that freeze well and unless you're making pickles with them, they're not really something that's in a lot of things that we're preserving in any other way. So those are like a fresh eating only item. That means we need like one or two vines and that's plenty for fresh eating during the season. Um, we have some other goals with some of the other crops, but I'm gonna go through with you our tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes just to give you kind of an idea of how I go about this entire process start to finish for everything that we grow. So tomatoes, I start reviewing the year before. So in 2022, we grew five paste tomatoes at the community garden, two determinant tomatoes at the community garden. And at home, we had 15 heirloom tomatoes and two cherry tomatoes. That was everything that we grew tomato, tomato wise. That was 24 plants. And that's typically probably around what we grew previously in previous years. And with those tomatoes, I made salsa, pizza sauce, bruschetta, green tomato curry, and we did an awful lot of fresh tomato eating in season. Um, I can say the seven tomatoes, the, the paste and the determinant tomatoes that we grew at the community garden, far outproduced the 15 heirloom tomatoes that we grew at home. And I think a large part of that is the climate that I'm growing in. So we have a fairly short growing season. Um, it's around 120 days officially. I think we're maybe a little bit longer than that actually now maybe 130, 140 days, somewhere in there. Um, and a lot of the heirloom tomatoes, they're, you know, the big giant slicing tomatoes that grow on indeterminate vines. And if you have a long hot season to grow those, where, you know, you get a few tomatoes, then you get a few more tomatoes and a few more tomatoes and they just keep going, those may be the more productive tomato for you. But here, um, you know, right at that 120 days is when we're threatening frost, which a lot of, you know, peppers and tomatoes need. And it's beneficial for me to plant a determinant tomato or, um, you know, a smaller tomato, like a smaller paste tomato that's gonna put on its crop faster, they're gonna ripen faster. And the most beneficial thing that I find to growing those types of tomatoes is that they ripen all at the same time. They're not coming in in dribs and drabs. So when I'm ready to can my tomatoes, the majority of the crop is ready all at once. And I'm not like, you know, freezing a few tomatoes. Like I'm not trying to pick and add a few tomatoes at a time and waiting for enough to be able to do something with them. So next year, I thought about, do we wanna make these products again? Are there other things that I wanna make with tomatoes that will help inform me if 24 tomatoes was too few or too many? So we liked everything that I made this year and we will make everything that I made this year next year. I don't think we had too much of anything. If anything, we had too little of 
probably most of it. Um, I think the green tomato curry was probably pretty spot on. Um, we had 14 jars if we eat it like once a month, which is about as often as we'll probably want to eat it, then we're pretty on par. Um, in addition to those things that we made last year, I want to add some things. So next year we want to try canning our own enchilada sauce, excuse me. We want to try making salsa verde. Um, and I want to can a lot of my own diced tomatoes. Um, we use a lot of diced tomatoes and other things like when I'm making chili or rice dishes, a whole bunch of things. And I want to try putting up our own diced tomatoes. That means we're going to need more tomatoes next year. Specifically, I think that means we need to cut back on our heirlooms. We have plenty for fresh eating. We like toasted tomato sandwiches. You know, if, if I cut back by a few plants, we're still gonna have lots of tomatoes to eat fresh. And I think we need to increase our paste tomatoes and our determinant tomatoes. So 24 total plants, I'm thinking we should add eight plants to that. We should be aiming for like 32 plants next year. And instead of 15 heirlooms, I wanna cut it back to eight or nine heirlooms. That should be plenty. Um, I think two cherry tomatoes was pretty, pretty spot on, but I've got some seeds this year I wanna try out. So there's two tried and true I have to grow every year. Jared's favorite is Tasty Treat. My favorite is either Sun Gold or Sun Sugar. And I wanna leave space for a couple to try this year, um, just to see if maybe there's another favorite out there. So three or four cherry tomatoes, I think we will be growing. I'm also growing in our arrow garden. I've kind of, it's so funny. I saw a video the other day, um, Jessica from Roots and Refuge did a micro dwarf and a dwarf tomato video. And it's so funny, like I had ordered a few in the fall to try growing in the arrow garden. I think indoor growing is something that people are gravitating to like never before because of the prices of things in grocery stores. And it's just funny how gardening trends, you know, seem to bite everyone all at once. So micro dwarfs are something that I am interested in growing this year as well. Um, I have Pinocchio growing currently in the Arrow Garden. It's about 65 days old now today. There's tons of tomatoes on it. None of them are ripe yet, but I'll continue to do Arrow Garden updates and show you those as well. Um, in terms of determinant tomatoes, I'm thinking between eight and 10. And paste tomatoes, I think we need a lot more of. By far, paste tomatoes are my favorite to use for processing because we don't have a mill or anything here to remove the seeds and skins. Skins don't really bother me. I just chop them, dice them finely and throw them in. They don't bother any of the rest of us here. They're safe to can along with, you know, your tomato products. So I have no concerns about tomato skins, but getting the seeds out, it's far easier to get the seeds out of paste tomatoes. They typically have like one, chamber in the center so if you slice it in half you can scoop out all of the seeds from each half dice up your tomatoes and you're good to go whereas slicing tomatoes they have like convoluted you know nooks and crannies throughout the tomato and it's really difficult to remove the seeds so i want significantly more paste tomatoes next year than this year we're essentially doubling our paste tomatoes so that's tomatoes that's how i approach it for everything so for peppers, um, this year we grew 18 peppers at the community garden and we had nine peppers at home in pots. I have never found growing peppers in pots to be nearly as productive as growing them in ground. So next year I'm axing the peppers in pots. They're going in ground, mostly at the community garden, maybe a few at home that we can, you know, have access to to run out and grab a few for supper here and there. So this year with those 18 plus the nine, we made cowboy candy, not enough. We need to make more next year. So already I know I need more jalapenos. 
Um, we made hot pepper jelly and it was in, an ingredient. We saved it as um, like fajita strips, as diced peppers to throw into ingredients, stir fries. Um, they were added to, we did like skillet potatoes where we chopped up the potatoes and froze them, seasoned with, with um, onions and peppers, like um, O'Brien potatoes. Uh, we also made crabless crab cakes this year with our summer squash and added peppers to that. That's something we also liked and want to do more of next year. So all of these things we want to do more of. And I know cowboy candy, we didn't have nearly enough. Next year, I also want to um, make, in addition to just peppers frozen, I want to make up bags of our own stir fry vegetables and preserve those for the winter. Those will be an ingredient in that. I want to make stuffed peppers. I've made stuffed peppers um, this winter and this fall, but I used purchased peppers, not our own bell peppers. So I want to have enough to actually make some stuffed peppers with. And we also want to try and freeze our own like jalapeno poppers to have, you know, appetizer nights. Occasionally we'll have appetizer nights with the kids and we want to have our own jalapeno poppers. So there's again, I need more, more jalapenos. So this year, I think we will try to grow 32 peppers at the community garden. Half of those will be sweet peppers, some of them will be bell, some of them will be like frying peppers, um, and we'll have 16 hot, probably half of those will be jalapenos and a variety of other things sprinkled in there. And I wanna try to fit into our raised beds another eight to 10 peppers. Probably most of those will be, um, you know, maybe one or two jalapenos, a couple of bells, a few frying peppers, and that will be what we grow at home. So that is also a significant increase. Um, I guess we'll talk about potatoes right quick and then I have another thought that I wanna share. So potatoes this year, I grew the fingerling potatoes. Um, the, I had like a one or two pound package. I think there was only 10 seed potatoes in it. Seven of those went in the ground at the community garden and three of those went into a pot on our covered porch at home. Um, like I said, we made some skillet potatoes and we ate the rest of them fresh. We ended up with 22 pounds of tomatoes out of those seven in-ground potatoes. The ones that we got out of the pot, I think those you know, served us one meal. Um, and I want more potatoes next year. We I saved most of them for Thanksgiving. Um, I really wanted to have a Thanksgiving meal that had a lot of our own produce, so it was our own carrots and things like that. Um, and next year, I'd like to be able to eat more than just like, you know, one large meal. Um, I'd like to have, you know, several months of meals worth of potatoes. So I have saved back, I haven't weighed it, but it's probably six or seven pounds of seed potatoes um, and I want to plant 20 in the ground at the community garden. I'm hoping that will give us around 50 pounds of potatoes. And then I want to plant between five and 10 here at home. They were nice. They didn't give us a lot, but they were like, you know, small, perfect, like new potatoes. They were delicious. So that will be just for a couple meals at home while we're waiting for the main harvest at the community garden. So in addition to what we made this year, I'd like to add in like some stews that maybe I can pressure can and also make like some shepherd's pie type things or, and mashed potatoes that I can put in the freezer. Okay, so we've talked about weather, taste preferences, garden goals in general, but the last kind of important factor in this part of the planning process is resources. How much land do you have available to develop? Has it been developed? Um, is, it, is it productive? Is it fertile? Um, what are your time 
restraints. Do you have time to commit to a larger garden than you're already growing? Do you have time to grow all of the things that you want to grow? Um, one thing that has been a hard lesson, and I guess we'll talk about that a little bit, um, the three things that we talked about on my list this year, I want to increase. And I've already mentioned in previous videos, I've reached my maximum for garden space that I can handle in our current life situation. That means some of the things I have grown in the past, I will not have the space and time to grow this year. Um, flowers have typically gotten a lot of attention from me. They will still get a lot of attention from me, but they will be getting far less attention this year. This year is going to be all about the vegetable garden and the flowers will be secondary to that. The flowers don't feed me, the vegetables do. So um, resources, whatever that means, um, are an important thing to consider as well. And not just the size of your garden, but also your time commitment. Do you have mobility issues, health issues that are preventing you from you know, being in the garden as much as previous years? Um, it, it's as important as all of the other things that we've already discussed. So that is where I am at in the garden planning process. And I am not kidding you when I say this is one of my favorite things. Um, just because I'm not in the garden this time of year does not mean that my brain is not in the garden this time of year. I like to think about it a lot. Um, I love gardening. I wish I had come to it earlier in my life, um, but I'm, I'm grateful that I came to it when I did. And um, I hope you are as excited about your upcoming growing season as I am about mine. And I hope you found some useful tidbits of information from this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments. Sometimes I think I'm on a ramble and I'm the only one interested in some of these things that I'm talking about. But I really do love hearing from you guys when you're just as excited as I am. So I thank you for watching. I hope you come back. I think we have lots of fun things to talk about in the coming weeks and months. And once the garden gets going, we'll have even more wonderful things to share. So come back again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.